What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. Continuing on in my run up to Terminator Dark Fate. I gotta review this sequel that's just incredible and one of the best sequels and action movies I've ever seen. Whew! Gotta hold it in. Gotta hold it in. This is my review of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Terminator 2 was released in 1991, seven years after the release of the original Terminator. The reason it took so long was because James Cameron wanted to have time for a bigger budget and room to have more expensive and more extensive visual effects to fulfill the vision he wanted for the sequel, which required more, required groundbreaking CGI at the time. This was among the first big movies to extensively use CGI in its movie, we'll get to that more in the film. James Cameron also directed the original Terminator, and some other movies he's directed include True Lies, The Abyss, Aliens, Titanic, and of course, Avatar. So in Terminator 2, Judgment Day, nearly 10 years have passed since Sarah Connor was targeted for termination by a cyborg from the future. Now her son, John, the future leader of the Resistance, is the target for a newer, more deadly Terminator. Once again, the Resistance has managed to send a projector back to attempt to save John and her mother, Sarah. The movie brings Arnold Schwarzenegger back as a T-800, this time as the protector to save John and Sarah. Linda Hamilton returns as Sarah Connor. We got Robert Patrick as the T-1000, the more advanced, deadly Terminator that's sent to kill John Connor. And we have Edward Furlong playing John Connor. What, what can I say about Terminator 2 that hasn't been said already? This is easily regarded not only as one of the best action movies ever made, one of the best sequels ever made, but it's highly regarded as one of the best movies ever made, especially in terms of blockbuster status. And I'd say this is probably my favorite James Cameron film as well, because he worked so hard to make a more ambitious sequel with a higher budget and more extensive visual effects without sacrificing the quality of the storytelling that made the original Terminator so, so awesome. And the end result, it's, it's a fantastic movie. It's definitely paid off. I think this was the highest grossing film of 1991, if I'm not mistaken, and it was very well deserved. I love seeing the cast in this movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger is excellent once again playing the T-800. And it's crazy because he did a great job playing the villain role in the original Terminator. But he's just as awesome playing the good guy hero role in the sequel. Maybe a little better, actually. It's cool seeing the characters flip-flop in both movies, the actor, and still do great on um, both sides of the coin. I like that he still kept some iconic one-liners and just an amazing presence throughout. Uh, it has some incredible action in there. And I think there's more of a character to, to the Terminator this go around, but in the first movie because he hangs out with John Connor. John Connor alert, tries to teach him how to act more like human than machine. Uh, one of John's pet peeves is no kills because killing's bad, of course. And so, it's, so I love seeing the interaction between Arnold and John Connor as he's more of the protector this go round instead of the killer. Likewise, Linda Hamilton returns, of course, to Sarah Connor. And remember I said in my review of the original Terminator that we were building up to an amazing action heroine? Well, we get that in Terminator 2. She is uh, amazing in this film. Oh, man. Like, she beefed herself up for the role. Like, she's a, she's a very more beefy, and you can tell she's trained herself to play a more imposing character, one you don't want to mess with, and yeah, you don't want to mess with Sarah Connor, because she can go unhinged when things don't go her way. She definitely plays a more crazier version of Sarah Connor than in the first movie, who was the normal everyday girl caught into the action. Now that she knows what's really going on, and people think she's this insane mad woman, and she'll be put behind bars. Yeah, you don't really want to mess with her. And she plays a character in this movie that really loses her hope in humanity because of the trauma she faced after the end of the first movie. 
But it still comes across on screen, and she ranks as one of the best female action heroines in any movie because there's a lot of depth to the character. And I think her delivery is fantastic. And all around, Sarah Connor. Man, I love her. <laughs> you got Robert Patrick playing the T-1000, the more advanced Terminator who can dissolve through liquid metal. And it's harder to kill him because of the liquid metal and the advanced technology. And I dare say he's a more intimidating Terminator than Arnold was. I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion or not, but he can be... Quite scary in this movie, especially when he dissolves into liquid metal and it's hard to kill. Some of those effects are insane to watch, and it's crazy that a movie that released in 1991 had mixes practical and CGI effects so seamlessly, and effects haven't aged a day. Compare that to the $300 million budget of Justice League, where the effects artists have a time covering up Henry Cavill's upper lip. No! Then you got Edward Furlong as John Connor, and a part of me wants to dismiss the kid as an annoying actor because John Connor is very annoying and obnoxious throughout, but at the same time, he's a 10 year old kid who doesn't know if he believes in all this madness or not. Uh, he thinks his mom's really crazy, and it takes him a while to adjust what's really going on. But I think he did a good job. I enjoyed his dynamic, especially with Schwarzenegger in the film. And he's still a lot of fun in the role. I definitely have to give it that. That action in this movie. Some of the best action we've ever seen in any film. And I think the action still holds up a lot of it's practical. All the chases are real. They do real stunts in this film. They don't cover it up with CGI or anything. And it makes the movie all the more rewarding because James Cameron took the time to make incredible action sequences that feel real and earned. The chases in this movie are so insane. A very, almost Mad Max level. It kind of reminds me of some of the Mad Max movies and how insane some of these chases are, especially where they're on those bridge passes, that one chase sequence with John Connor on the, the motorbike and the T-1000 driving the big truck. That chase scene is insane. It's crazy that nobody got hurt doing these stunts. Some of these stunts are fantastic. Like, there's another sequence where the T-1000's flying a helicopter chasing our heroes, and the helicopter goes under uh, bridges throughout in this chase sequence. And, yeah, you tend to take that for granted, but, yeah, they actually had to get a helicopter under a bridge and actually pull it off without risking accidents and stuff. And it, it's crazy. They were able to fund the uh, life-threatening stunts that made it in the final cut of the film and actually were able to pull it off without anybody getting hurt. I love action movies that do that. Action sequences that amaze the audience and how real everything is. And those are some of my favorite action movies. The effects are very groundbreaking as well. The practical CGI, especially with... Uh, Especially with the T-1000 I brought up, especially when it dissolves into liquid metal. That was groundbreaking effects uh, for 1991. The CGI actually still holds up very well. Because it's used very seamlessly with the practical effects as well. And because of the success of Terminator 2, CGI was later revolutionized in Jurassic Park. And CGI has become a huge staple in modern movies. Some say it's a good thing, some say it's a bad thing. CGI is good when you don't abuse it. Most movies tend to use CGI very well. So you got to thank Terminator 2 for paving the way for digital technology, which a lot of times is used very, very well. Storytelling is very interesting because the movie is surprisingly more profound than what you expect in action blockbusters, especially on the human condition. You think this would just be this fun escapist action blockbuster. And there's definitely times where it's like that. But at the same time, the movie addresses upon the fate of humanity. What are humans deserve being saved? What all humans do or fight and cause problems and make wars. Build weapons of mass destruction and tend to resort to the worst of humanity. 
when things go south. Sarah Connor is a character that lost her humanity because of what she experienced in the first movie. One of the more profound sequences of the movie, is, of course, is the nightmare sequence where she dreams about the nuclear holocaust on the judgment day that they're trying to prevent in this movie and how she cannot save everybody from the destruction. And that is a very profound sequence. Not only is it visually stunning, but it is also devastating at the same time in terms of the themes that are present in the film. Another interesting layer of the film, like I said, is the Terminator, Arnold, who, after being the Terminator sent to kill Sarah Connor in the first movie, being reprogrammed back to save her and John this time, uh, the Terminator learning more about humanity and uh, the best things of humanity, like the emotional side of humans, definitely leaves a profound effect on the characters and also the viewers leading to one of the most emotionally satisfying conclusions I would say in any blockbuster. A lot of people tend to cry during the finale of Terminator 2. Didn't go there for me, but I can see why it affects a lot of people. And I bet if I was younger, I probably would have had a more emotional impact if I had seen it at a younger age. I didn't see it until a few years ago. It took me, oh, it took me a little bit to see Terminator 2. The score in this movie, the music score, is much improved. It's not as cheesy and synth-driven as the original. It seems like they had more money to make a more epic score on an epic scope. And it's cool they brought the same composer back so he can make a more ambitious score. It definitely held up a lot better. He got to touch up the iconic theme from the first and do it in a more epic scope to... It also expands the mythology of the Terminator lore in very exciting and awesome ways. We got to see one of the things I love in Terminator 2 is the whole idea of going past what you're destined to do and reshaping the future one day at a time. That's one of the coolest things about Terminator 2, especially with the introduction of Miles Dyson as a character. We found out he was the guy who created the technology that led to Judgment Day and the decline of human civilization because he kept the Terminator arm that Arnold left behind in the first movie. There's definitely some interesting layers with that as well, what Sarah Connor wanted to do when discovering who the guy responsible for Skynet and Judgment Day was. And we have some very profound layers on you know consequences of taking out people before they actually make the decisions that they were destined to do and it definitely leaves you thinking while also being an exciting and awesome action blockbuster i love terminator 2 james cameron created a fantastic sequel and it's something he's very good at making sequels that tend to be bigger and more ambitious than the first. He also did it with Aliens. While well, I think Alien is the better film, Aliens is still an in-your-face, over-the-top, kick-butt action sequel that I still highly enjoy. And Terminator 2 is even better. He took the mythology of the first movie, touched it up with a bigger budget, and made an awesome action film out of it. And I love it for that. Between the action, the characters, the score, the mythology, the groundbreaking effects. Terminator 2 is just awesome. It kicks so much butt, and it's easily among the best action movies I've ever seen. Definitely up there for me with Mad Max Fury Road and John Wick and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Those are probably my four favorite action films, hands down. Being Terminator 2 actually gives me more excitement for Avatar 2 because of James Cameron's track record with sequels. I wasn't a big fan of Avatar, but I think with James Cameron's past history with sequels and doing a great job of expanding the mythology and lore that was set up in its predecessors, I think the Avatar franchise can actually get better than what the first movie set up. So I'm hoping Avatar 2 is worth the 12 year wait and it's gonna be awesome, but we'll see when we get there. 
But as for Terminator 2 Judgment Day, I'm going to give the film a 5 out of 5 stars, and on the 100 point scale, it's getting the 100 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. I wanted to get those two films out of the way before seeing Terminator Dark Fate. I'm about to see it in the next day or two because, because even though the movie's not doing well at the box office, I'm still excited in seeing the film because of James Cameron back as producer. Linda Hamilton coming back as Sarah Connor. I think it's going to be an interesting experience watching it without seeing the other Terminator sequels, Rise of Machine, Salvation, Genesis, because they weren't as well received. It'll be interesting to see what James Cameron does after so many years of being on the sidelines. And I just want to see a fun movie. And we'll see how Terminator Dark Fate goes for me, considering I've heard mixed things, especially from fans. Critics seem to like it more. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know my thoughts, and I'll have a first thoughts video of Terminator Dark Fate coming very, very soon. But if you've seen Terminator 2, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? Whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If your comments are respectful, your comments can be potentially seen in future comment shout-out videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button to see more content, and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!